Have you ever stopped to wonder how many of the facts you know are completely wrong? From science to history, we've been told countless stories that sound true but fall apart the moment you look closer. Today, we're uncovering the totally incorrect facts everyone still believes. And if you love challenging old assumptions and exploring hidden truths, be sure to subscribe, like, and share, because curiosity deserves company. We welcome you to our channel, Facts in Truth. Let's get started and begin by unraveling one of the biggest misconceptions in human history. Humans didn't evolve from monkeys. Now, I know right off the bat this one may ruffle a few feathers. We're not here to argue. We are here to uncover the truth behind a myth many of us were taught. So just hear me out. The idea that humans evolved directly from monkeys is simply incorrect. What scientists actually tell us is this. Humans and modern monkeys share a common ancestor that lived around 25 to 30 million years ago. From that ancestor, different evolutionary branches formed, some leading to modern monkeys, some to apes, and eventually to us. Think of it like a family tree. Monkeys and humans aren't parent and child. They're cousins who split from the same relative long ago. Modern monkeys are still evolving today just as we are, but on their own separate path. This myth probably stuck because it's easier to say we came from monkeys than to explain millions of years of complex evolutionary branching. But the truth is far more fascinating. It shows just how deeply interconnected all life really is. And I'll admit, having had the opportunity to be around primates at one time in my life, it's hard not to notice the resemblance. For me, science explains how life has changed over time, and my faith tells me who made it possible. I believe both perspectives can coexist, each adding its own kind of wonder. And if even the story of where we came from can be misunderstood, imagine what other facts might not be so factual. Like, sugar causes hyperactivity in children. If you've ever been to a child's birthday party, you've probably heard someone say, all that sugar is going to have the kids bouncing off the walls. It's such a common belief that parents have used it for decades as the go-to explanation for hyperactivity. But here's the truth. Scientists have conducted dozens of controlled studies, and they consistently find no evidence that sugar directly causes hyperactive behavior in children. Kids who eat sugar don't suddenly become more restless or excitable compared to those who don't. So why does the myth persist? Much of it comes down to expectation and context. When children eat cake and candy at a party, they're already in a high-energy environment, running, playing, and being social. Parents and adults often expect sugar to be the culprit so they notice energetic behavior more. It's a case of perception shaping belief. That doesn't mean sugar has no effects at all. It can give a quick burst of energy as blood sugar rises, followed by a crash. But the exaggerated sugar rush we've all heard about is more story than science. In fact, one famous study even tested this by giving some parents sugar-free drinks for their kids while telling them it contained sugar. The parents still reported their children as acting hyper. That's how powerful our expectations can be. And if even something as everyday as sugar can fool us, imagine the distortions we find in the pages of history books. Like this next one. Christopher Columbus discovered America. Here's one that I struggled with myself the claim that Christopher Columbus discovered America. At first glance, it makes no sense. After all, indigenous people had already been living across the Americas for tens of thousands of years before Columbus ever set sail. So, what's the truth? Columbus wasn't the first European to reach the continent either. Around the year 1000, Norse explorer Leif Erikson established a settlement in what is now Newfoundland, Canada, nearly 500 years before Columbus. Archaeological sites at Lonzo Meadows confirm this. So why do our history books still say Columbus discovered America? The answer lies in politics, propaganda, and power. Columbus's voyages sponsored by Spain kicked off a wave of European colonization and global trade that forever changed the world. To European powers, his arrival marked the beginning of a new era. And so his story was elevated and simplified into a neat headline, Columbus discovered America. The reality is far more complex. He didn't discover an empty land, but instead encountered thriving civilizations with rich histories, cultures, and traditions of their own. 
The word discovery erases the people who were already here, and yet, the story stuck. Why? Because it was easy to teach, easy to remember, and politically useful. Simplified narratives often outlast complicated truths. What do you think? Do you believe Christopher Columbus discovered America first? Or do you think it was someone else? And if so, who? Let us know in the comments below. And while explorers often get more credit than they deserve, the same is true for the myths we've been told about our very own bodies. Here's a myth that just won't die. The claim that humans only use 10% of their brains. You've probably heard it in movies, books, or even casual conversations. But the truth is, this idea is pure fiction. Modern neuroscience shows that nearly every part of the brain has a known function, from processing movement and speech to memory and emotions. Even simple tasks like tying your shoes or sipping coffee light up multiple regions at once. Functional MRI scans reveal that activity is constantly happening across the brain, even when we're resting or sleeping. So where did the 10% myth come from? Historians believe it may have started with a misinterpretation of early neurological studies in the late 19th or early 20th century. Scientists observed that only small portions of the brain seemed active at a time, and some suggested we hadn't unlocked our full potential. Popular writers and motivational speakers grabbed onto this idea, claiming that if we could just tap into the other 90%, we'd unlock superhuman abilities. Hollywood later ran with it, and the myth spread worldwide. The irony is that we already use all of our brain, just not every part at once. Think of it like a city, not every street is busy at the same time, but the whole city is still functioning. Your brain is no different. The real wonder isn't that we only use a fraction of our brain. It's that such a complex organ works seamlessly every second of our lives. Be honest, did you grow up believing the 10% brain myth? Share in the comments, because I bet most of us did at some point. I know I did. And speaking of things we've been told about our bodies, let's look at one of the most common pieces of health advice out there. How much water we should really be drinking. We've heard the advice. Drink eight glasses of water every single day to stay healthy. But here's the thing. It's not actually based on solid science. Hydration needs vary widely depending on your age, size, activity level, and even the climate you live in. Much of the water your body needs comes not only from drinks, but also from the foods you eat. Fruits, vegetables, and even cooked grains all contain water that helps keep you hydrated. So where did the eight glasses rule come from? Many researchers trace it back to a 1945 US Food and Nutrition Board recommendation. But what most people missed was the second part of the statement, that much of that fluid comes from food. Over time, the nuance got lost, and we were left with a neat, simple, but misleading rule. The truth is simpler. Your body is great at telling you when you need water. Thirst is usually the best guide, not a rigid number. For some people, that's less than eight glasses a day. For others, it may be more. And just like water, many of the things we think we know about animals have been watered down into myths of their own. You've heard the saying, blind as a bat. It's one of those phrases that gets tossed around without a second thought. But here's the twist. Bats aren't blind at all. In fact, they can see quite well. Most bat species rely on a combination of vision and echolocation to navigate their world. Some bats actually have excellent night vision, rivaling or even surpassing that of humans. Their eyes are adapted to low-light conditions, allowing them to detect shapes and movement in near darkness. And here's the fascinating part. Not all bats even use echolocation. Take the flying fox, sometimes called a fox bat. These giants, with wingspans reaching up to six feet, depend almost entirely on their keen eyesight and sharp sense of smell to find fruit and nectar. They don't need echolocation at all, proving once again that bats are far from blind. So no, bats aren't stumbling through the dark. They're highly skilled navigators, using a toolkit of senses more advanced than our own. The myth of blindness not only underestimates them, it overshadows how extraordinary these creatures really are. And bats aren't the only animals we've underestimated. Take the humble goldfish, for example, long thought to have a memory that lasts only a few seconds. Goldfish are often the punchline of jokes, supposedly cursed with a memory span of just three seconds. But science tells a very different story. 
Studies have shown that goldfish can remember tasks, patterns, and even people for weeks, sometimes months. In one 2003 study at the University of Plymouth, goldfish were trained to press levers for food at specific times of day, proving they could recall routines far longer than a few seconds. And ask any goldfish owner. They'll tell you their fish swim excitedly to the top of the tank when it's feeding time or when a familiar face approaches. That's recognition, not forgetfulness. So where did the myth come from? Likely from watching goldfish swim in circles inside tiny bowls, which makes it seem like they've forgotten where they've been. But the truth is, they know their space perfectly well. It's just limited. The goldfish, far from forgetful, is actually a clever little creature with a memory far better than we've given it credit for. And if even a tiny goldfish can surprise us, imagine the truths hidden behind the giants of our planet. Ask most people what the tallest mountain in the world is, and they'll quickly answer, Mount Everest. At 29,032 feet above sea level, it's an awe-inspiring giant and an undeniable challenge for climbers. But here's the twist. Everest isn't the tallest mountain on Earth, at least not when you measure from base to peak. That hidden honor belongs to Mauna Kea in Hawaii. From its base deep on the ocean floor to its summit, Mauna Kea stretches over 33,000 feet, nearly a mile taller than Everest. The reason we don't recognize it as such is simple. Most of it is underwater, invisible to the eye. It's a bit like an iceberg. The most impressive part lies hidden beneath the surface. Scientists confirm this by using precise measurements. GPS data and ocean mapping reveal just how massive Mauna Kea really is. Everest may be iconic, but Mauna Kea is the true giant. This myth persisted because of the way we chose to measure. Tallest above sea level was easier to define, and Everest had the drama of snow-capped peaks and daring climbers to capture the imagination. But the truth is, the world's greatest mountain isn't always the one that looks the part. And if something as seemingly straightforward as a mountain can be misunderstood, imagine what we've gotten wrong about something as close to us as our own sense of taste. If you ever looked at an old-school science textbook, you probably saw a colorful taste map of the tongue, sweet at the tip, salty and sour on the sides, bitter at the back. It was tidy, easy to remember, and completely wrong. In reality, all parts of the tongue can detect all five basic tastes, sweet, salty, sour, bitter, and umami. Taste buds are spread evenly across the tongue, each capable of detecting multiple flavors. The myth came from a misinterpretation of a German study in the early 1900s. Later, in 1974, Researchers published findings in science that finally debunked the taste map, showing it was based on exaggerated data and poor translations. Yet the image persisted in textbooks and classrooms for decades because it was simple and visual. It made for easy teaching, even if it wasn't true. Here's a relatable way to think about it. Ever eaten a piece of chocolate and let it melt toward the back of your tongue? Still sweet, isn't it? That's because taste buds everywhere are pulling their weight, not just the ones on the tip. So while the taste map looked neat on paper, your tongue has always been a far more versatile tool than the myth suggests. And if even our own tongues have been misunderstood, imagine how much mystery surrounds one of nature's most colorful creatures, the chameleon. The science behind it is fascinating. A 2015 study published in Nature Communications revealed that chameleons control their colors using special skin cells called iridophores. These cells rearrange tiny crystals that reflect different wavelengths of light, allowing the lizards to create an incredible palette of shades. And here's the anecdote that might surprise you. Some species light up in neon-like displays during mating rituals, almost like wearing a glowing sign that says, Pick me. Others go dark and bold when threatened essentially warning predators to keep their distance. So the chameleon isn't simply a master of disguise. It's a living mood ring, flashing signals to the world in ways we're only beginning to understand. And just like the chameleon's misunderstood gift, so many of the facts we've been taught are really myths hiding in plain sight. As we've seen, the world is full of mistaken beliefs. From brain power and goldfish memory to mountains, taste buds, and even chameleons, myths often spread faster than truth. But here's the question. How many other facts do we still accept today that future generations will look back on and laugh at? The beauty of discovery is that it never really ends. 
Each myth we unravel brings us closer to understanding the world as it truly is. If you enjoyed this journey into the myths we've all believed, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And join the conversation in the comments. Which of these myths surprised you the most? And when you're ready for more, check out our other videos here on Facts Intrigue. You might just find that the next fact you've always believed isn't a fact at all.